I'm Rob Lucuria, senior editor at Gold Derby, here with the one and only Emmy-nominated actor, McKenna Grace. Um, McKenna, I was saying to you offline that, you know, a role like this in A Friend of the Family just looks looks so emotionally exhausting. Um, you know, Jan Broberg, who you play, does a lot of crying. You know, a, a lot of time has passed since you filmed that. But when you think back, was that really as challenging as it seemed? Because, yeah, it looked very emotional for you. A lot of hard work went into this project. I'd have to, I, I'm really, really proud of this project, but it's funny because being on uh, this set, I learned so much about myself and about acting because I had to do a lot of things and push myself to places that I hadn't gone before. So I really learned a lot. And looking back now, I've done a project since then. And I'm like, I could have done so much better now that I like, now, I don't know, like I did that project and I feel like I learned so much. I'm like, oh, I could have done so much better. But um, it was really, it was really emotionally and sometimes physically exhausting, but I am just so proud to have gotten to tell Jan's story and gotten to play her and portray her story. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Absolutely. And someone of your age is still so young and yet you've been working for such a long time. I would call you almost like a, you know, an old veteran at this rate. <laughs> um, but still, you you must. Do you have to rely on your support network, your parents, your family, your friends to, get, you know, to, to get you through a shoot where you're playing somebody who was so um, mistreated and sexually abused that must have been quite challenging even just personally I mean yeah I, I think that playing heavy roles always comes with some it always comes with some heaviness and some weight but uh I mean truly at the end of the day I was telling a story about resilience and about strength and about Jan coming back together with her family and getting to tell her story and I think that one of the thing that, things that our show did that I really like is that at the very beginning, at before the first episode starts, you have Jan explaining, you know, the real life Jan sitting there and explaining, you know, this may be hard to believe, but it's my story and this is what happened to me and I'm still here. And so it gives you some hope and you get to see that she made it out on the other side and she's so strong and I'm so happy to have her in my life. But uh, yeah, I do definitely... I, luckily, I have parents who really support me in what I do and are always like, you know, if you don't want to be doing this, then we can always like not have you be an actress or if you want to do something else. I'm like, no way, because truly this is what I love more than anything else. So yeah. I guess that gets me through it is just knowing that like this is what I love doing. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, and it's it's your job and it's good that you can separate the two. But, um, you know, Nick Antosca, the creator of the series, I, I told him that this was genius having Jan herself introduce this series because it made me feel kind of like safe that we were able to delve into this very uncomfortable backstory or, you know, her life story because without that, I would have felt it was being exploitative. So on that note, I wonder how you felt about having her so available to you as a resource on set during production. I know Jake Lacey felt really, really positive about that. What about you? No, me too. That was the biggest thing for me going into this role was the first thing. One of the first things that I asked um, Nick on Zoom whenever I first read the like first four scripts. No, I read the whole series, I think. I stayed up all night <laughs> reading the whole series. I was like, there's no way. Uh, but I got on Zoom with them and I was like, is Jan actually a part of this? Because that's, I don't, I don't feel good or comfortable about telling this story or playing her if she isn't on board with it. And luckily she was so on board. And from the get go, from the first time that I talked to her, we were on FaceTime for like two hours and both of us cried and she was constantly so available to me. And I think that one of the scariest things about taking this role was that not only am I playing Jan, a real life person who's a big part of this production and telling her family's story. And it's a story that's really dark and has a lot of heavy subject material, but I'm also coming in halfway through the shoot because I'm Jan in her older years. So I'm also coming in 
after they've already gotten to know each other and everybody's been shooting for two months and developed like bonds or whatever. And so I was terrified. So I really tried to learn as much as I could about the story. And I dove so deep into Jan's backstory. I read her book that she wrote with her mother and um, she sent me a transcript for a newer one that's been released since then. And I had like court documents and her old diary and all of the letters between her and B. And I would stay up even though I had like a 6 a.m. call time, I'd be up to like four reading all of this stuff, like in my hotel room up in like the dark of my room. Uh, but it really meant the world having Jan being so open and honest with me constantly. It it really, it felt, it felt safer. I felt like, you know, hopefully I can really do Jan right and I can ask her questions if I need to. Wow. You know, as you know, that doesn't come around very often on a project. Um, what a gift to be able to do that. And then it reminds me, as you mentioned, you you took over the role from Hendrik Yancey, who plays the younger Jan. And she's wonderful as well in that role, in this role. You both, um, I think you both together collaboratively, not, not that you worked together necessarily, but because you're in different timelines. But I just feel like, is there any scope at all for you to even... Um, meet with Hendrix or do you did you keep it separate how does that work because you you play Jan so consistently throughout the series it felt like you were so aligned with the way that was going to work so talk me through that well pretty much there was like a her and I were actually staying at the same hotel uh, me and all of the girls who were the sisters and the youngers yeah. and all of us were in the same hotel so um you know we'd all go out for lunch and whatnot and I there was about a two-week overlap of Hendrix and I being there and then for some of the flashbacks in the later episodes she came back further down the line and we hung out again but I for me as uh as a child actor who has played a lot of younger versions of people that was so exciting for me to have like a younger version of myself that was mind blowing so i was so stoked i think oh my gosh my mom and i were talking to her mom earlier today like on the phone uh but like i just it was so cool to get to know her and to be able to work with her kind of you know I, there was about a two week overlap, like I said, and I just tried to spend a lot of time with her because I didn't, I wasn't able to watch her performance as Jan until a little bit later until they had like clips. So I tried to spend a lot of time with her and pick up on like the little things that she does. And it was complicated because not only was I playing her version of Jan, but then I'm also trying to play Jan Jan and then also bring in myself to the role. So I was playing like three different people at once and it was hilarious and really exciting to be able to explore. <laughs> yeah, I just think that you're really exercising so many muscles as a performer because you do have to bring your own voice, your own spirit to the role and make it your own. But of course, you have to be aware of what Hendrix was doing and you've got the real Jan. That's a lot. And yeah. you just hit the nail on the head, McKenna, because for years now, we've always talked about with you, you've played the younger this, the younger that. And uh, suddenly you are obviously coming of age as a performer where you are now old enough to play the characters in their adulthood. And you now get to do for younger actors what were uh, so many wonderful performers were doing for you D I mean isn't does that ha how does that mean what does that mean for you because now you're moving forward you get to impart some of the stuff that was given to you as a young performer it's it's really exciting to be I it's such a weird industry to grow up in and it is a weird thing to you know work as, as you grow up, but there's nothing I'd rather be doing. And it's really cool as I get older to continue to know more about this industry and what I do and to explore the different realms within acting and directing and producing and writing and then what goes on behind the scenes and the makeup and the hair and to be able to really dive in depth to all of that. And it's just been cool to be able to have my passion for this grow and grow and grow. And there's truly nothing I would rather be doing. So it's really cool because. I came out to LA to become an actress whenever I was so young, really having no idea what that meant or idea just how 
this was going to become my life, you know? So I made, I've probably made so many mistakes and then there's also been so much hard work, but also a lot of luck. So it's cool to be able to tell like Hendrix or, or other actors or actresses who are my age or younger to be able to like share just a little bit of, a little bit of the crumbs that I've managed to learn over the years, I guess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so you're, you're playing uh, Jan opposite Jake Lacey, who's playing B, Birch Toll. Um, I think Jake is an extraordinary actor and he was mesmerizing in this. Um, the two of you together on the screen, it just, I felt like the, it was just so compelling. I just love to know what did you most value about working with him? He said to me that he just thought every moment working with you was a, or was a, such a joy given it was so difficult to, you know, to, to do the material. Um, yeah. Well, how did you feel about working with Jake? Uh, that guy. No, I genuinely, <laughs> I like, I think that he was so magnificent in this series and captivating and uh, captivating to watch, like not just on screen, but whenever he was performing, because there's so many alternative takes and completely different directions that the scenes went in that weren't used in the series so it's just interesting to remember and to think back like whoa that was a crazy scene or that was crazy to shoot and just thinking about his performances it truly this show has been one of the like craziest and most interesting experiences because within acting I learned so much so it's one of my favorite things to talk about especially Jake and I's scenes and the relationship that we were portraying because it's it's interesting to have to portray a relationship like that having the scope and knowing what you know about the story and what's truly happening because as Jan you have to throw all of that out the window because she truly believed him this was a man who completely made her feel safe and this is like a second father to her a best friend that it turns and then it gets strange but I'm protecting my family but I love him does that mean I love him as as a husband or do I just love him as a family member but he loves me like a wife and it just gets so complicated as the years go on and whenever I got thrown into the mix as older Jan there had already been the complete brainwashing so I'm already completely in his grasp so for me it was really an exercise in acting because I in my mind I couldn't come on to set having my lines and in a set way in my head, how I wanted the scene to go or how I wanted to say them or how I wanted to react or respond because it truly solely depended on what Jake did. So if Jake was giving me this or if he changed the inflection or the emotion one bit, then I have to hang on his every word because that's what Jan had going through her life. It's just hanging on his word. Did he mention the aliens? Oh, he sounds a little angry. Did I do something wrong? You know? Yeah. So it's just, it was, it was so complicated and he's such an incredible actor. So it was, it was a crazy experience. And I, I'm such a fan of his. I'm such a fan of his, <laughs> I am too, to be honest. Um, so I um just thinking about particular scenes there's so many but I love the second last episode where you know the car accident and um you know Jan's saying to B that she's going to be in a play and he that he just uh, he switches on a dime and uh obviously the car accident um means that she's broken on the outside but I just it gave me some insight that she's so broken on the inside as well and I am curious as a lay, I'm not an actor, I have no idea, but how do you, do you switch on and switch off that very overt emotion, particularly when you, when you have to cry a lot, or do you need to stay in the moment when you're shooting scenes like that, just to help you be more authentic? I mean, it really truly depends. And it really depends on, is that what we're shooting all day long? Is that what we're doing? Is this a moment, but I like to, if I know that I have a really strong emotional scene or I have to convey a lot of emotions, or if that's the first scene up, I like to come on to set and I just listen to a lot of music. I 
I don't stay, stay in that because I don't want to just be like walking around set crying or something. But I listen to a lot of music because I find that it's something that can really pull me in, but also like push me out of an emotion. So I I just come on to set. I listen to a lot of music and I like to know if, you know, we're like five minutes out and then hone in on whatever emotion I'm supposed to be feeling. Wow. Um, I, I've heard other actors tell me about the music. Music is so transportative in very, in many ways. Um, yeah. Are you one of the actors who don't like to tell people what you're listening to, or are you free to say, this is what I generally listen to if I'm, if I need to be sad? It really depends. I love talking about music. So I, yeah. I'm so down. I have like a public Spotify place where I just post a bunch of playlists yes. and some of them, I make playlists depending on characters. Like I'll make playlists for, I don't think I had one for Jan. I think that I would just listen to, um, I just listen to, to my music that, you know, made me feel something every once in a while. But uh, I, <laughs> I listened to a lot of sad music while I was on that set. I listened to a lot of uh, Phoebe Bridgers and uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Nice. But yeah, it is. It it, it, it totally works. I, t- I totally see why you're doing that. Um, so look, we have chatted a few times already. The last time was about bad seed. The time before that was about handmaids, for which you received an Emmy nomination. And I I know it's it's not a it's a dumb question to say. Oh, why are you attracted to a like that? You're not attracted to them, but you're very smart in your choices. You are obviously still quite young, and you've got decades ahead of you in your career. You've made very smart choices. You you are you are a serious actor. You're not just some frivolous actor who just does whatever comes your way. So what, talk me through the process of, with your I, I I assume your parents of making those choices and picking roles that are very challenging that are going to really put you on the edge. Um, yeah, talk me through those choices. Can I just say thank you? That really means a lot because like I just I don't know. I try so hard. That's really my dream is to just be a serious actress and to do these projects that really mean something. So thank you. Um, But I don't know, my parents and I have a lot of trust in each other. I, I always, before taking on a script or something, even if I'm completely in love with it, I always make sure that my mom or dad reads it just because I'm like, I want a second opinion. You know, I'm in love with this. And even if you're not in love with it, I'm still going to be in love with it. But I want to know what you think. I want to know your thoughts or something because I want somebody to talk about it with. But whenever it comes to choosing roles, I mean, I'm just lucky to be getting the roles that I'm getting. I'm honored to have been able to portray the stories that I've had so far. But I don't know. I just really hope that I can continue to do this. But I really love to tell stories that feel important to me, that that tell something for a reason, that aren't just something that I found very tasteful about our show is that there's a lot of shock value in our culture nowadays. So I really appreciated that there was no sexual assault on screen and that there was no real super nudity or whatnot. It really focused on the psychological effects of this manipulator. And of course, everything that happened still happened, but it didn't have to be seen. So I I really like to tell stories that I find mean something to me. And I also really like to be challenged as an actress because I don't know how am I going to get better if I just continue to do things that I feel safe in. And even though I look back and I'm like, dang it, I could have done so, so much better. At least now I know that I can do better. And I've learned so much from that experience. And it's, it's been really cool lately to see myself like evolve and grow and learn new things and oh now I can do this I never knew that I could feel that emotion and portray that it's it's been really really cool as of lately uh but yeah I don't know I'm just really truly happy with the projects I've been able to do lately and I hope that I can continue down that path let's hope so um yeah I'm I'm so looking forward to speaking to you in 10 years time when you're almost a completely different performer we'll see what happens <laughs> with um but in the meantime congratulations on some beautiful work and a friend of the family and um thanks for your time today no thank you so so much it's always cool talking with you it's the coolest mm-hmm.